This week, I wanna walk you guys through the steps on the installation of a C channel. Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Jason with Ben's Woodworking. If you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I do bi-weekly videos showing tips and tricks and how-tos and product reviews, all in an effort to make you a better woodworker. This week, I wanna share one of those tips and tricks with you guys, and that is how to go about installing C channels. The reason I wanna do this video is because on the walnut dining room table that I just built, I tried C channels for the first time. While I don't know if they were totally necessary for that application, the biggest reason I did it is because I wanted to try and learn a new technique. The amount of questions and comments that I got when I was posting about that on Instagram was overwhelming. So as a result, I'm gonna walk you through the steps on how I went about installing that C-channel. And I'm also gonna kinda of go ahead and go over exactly what the C-channel is used for because that was another very common question that I got. So let's go ahead and just get into it. So what exactly is a C-channel and what is it even used for? So right here, I've got two different C-channels. The one that you see here is the one that I actually used on my dining room table. This is just a steel C-channel that you can buy from any home store like Lowe's, Home Depot. I believe it's 36 inches long, two inches wide, and it's not real deep. The downside to this is that you have to do all the drilling, you have to do the cutting to the size that you want, which is what I did for my table. Luckily, I had a friend that does a lot of metal work, so it was a pretty easy process. The other option that I found is a prefabricated C-channel. And this already has the slots cut for your bolts. It is definitely quite a bit deeper and you can purchase these in already pre-cut sizes. For example, this is a just standard 36 inch C channel. And then I believe you can get it in 12 inch increments over that. This right here is a 35 and then they have various sizes to match whatever the project is that you're doing. This C channel came from Legacy Lumber. I reached out to them to ask them if they'd be willing to send me one of their C-channels for the whole purpose of this video. So I'll be using this for the demonstration and I just wanted to show you guys another option and what I actually used when I did mine. Before I get into the installation process, I wanted to zoom in so you guys can see the difference between the two. This right here is the one I purchased from the local home store. This one right here is the one that I had sent to me by Legacy Lumber. This is the one that I will be using in the video this is the one that I used on my table. The reason I'm showing you this is because I used this on my table because my table was only an inch thick. Now, if you're working with slabs or this fake tabletop that I made just for the demonstration of this video, this is an inch and a half thick, which means I'm gonna go ahead and use this one for the demonstration because it will not go all the way through the wood like it would have if I used it on my tabletop. Now you should have a better understanding of one of the big differences between these two and how you could use each application depending on the situation. Real quickly, I just kind of want to show you some of the items that you're going to need, and you really don't need a lot. Obviously, the biggest thing that you're going to need for this is a router, and a couple of different bits are helpful. One, I'm going to be using a quarter inch spiral bit to cut the slots, and the other bit that I'm going to be using is just a double fluted straight bit that will be used to hog out the material in the center to ensure that it sits flush with the table. And besides some of the basic stuff, ruler, pencil, you know, all the things that you need to mark and lay out your lines and everything, is you really just need a straight edge for the router. Something that your router can actually ride along and stay parallel with the lines that you made. And just to be clear right now, yes, you're gonna see me using the Festool router system because that's what I have. At no point in this video will you hear me say that the only way that you can install C channels is with this equipment. If you have a router and a straight edge, you can do this. This is what I have, so this is what I'm gonna use. The first thing that I need to identify is how far away from the end I need my C-channel to sit. A couple of things for you guys to consider and something that I considered in my table. Where is your apron going to be if it is a table with an apron? How far in is that apron gonna sit? The reason that was a concern for me is because I wanted this to be behind my apron. So if my apron was here, my C-channels sat roughly right here. That doesn't matter on this demonstration, but I just wanted to point that out just so something you guys can think about if you choose to do something like this yourself. So for this demonstration, I'm just, I want my C channel to be roughly five inches from the end. Now the reason I'm marking these lines is just to make sure that I keep my C channel straight when I line it up to trace it. And as you can see here, now I have reference lines and I can just line my C channel up on those reference lines. And now, as long as I have it in the location that I need, I can go ahead and trace the C channel. Tracing it is exactly what you would expect, and that is just 
tracing the outline of the C-channel itself. I like to do the sides first. And just like that, now I have my sides. Now, you are going to want to make some sort of line at the end because that's going to be your reference stop. Now, this is a perfect opportunity to describe what a C-channel is actually used for. So if I place this here, think of this as a breadboard end. The purpose of a C-channel is to help keep your tabletop flat over time. So this would be the bottom side of the table. This is going to sit into the wood. You're going to be able to put bolts in each one of these. And the idea behind this is just like a breadboard where I'm going to fully tighten down the center. And with this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, I can kind of just make it snug and these are elongated to allow the wood to expand and contract while at the same time keeping everything flat. So when it comes to the ends, you don't want the ends to be the exact length of the C-channel. So we are gonna extend this out quarter inch to a half inch from where it already ends. And what that's gonna allow is once this is installed, if this does move with seasonal movement, it actually is allowed to move because there's still a little bit left here for it to slide left and right. So right here, I'm just gonna add, we'll just say for the demonstration of the video, I'm gonna add a half an inch. Now this doesn't have to be perfect because you're gonna be able to clean that up with a chisel at the end. So now I've got the area that I need to route all traced out and now it's time to go ahead and set up my router and start making the cuts. So I've got my router set up the way that I need it to be. I've got my, in this case, straight edge. If you look at this line here, this line is in line with the center of the drill bit. I currently have my quarter inch spiral bit because I'm going to start routing the grooves here and here. But remember, we trace this on the outside edge. So I wanna make sure the outside edge of my router bit is taking off this line. If I did, if I lined this up perfectly with the center, it would be off once we went to go put it on because this is not a center line, this is an edge line. Now we're gonna end up making the cuts for the grooves in two passes, why? Because I don't wanna go to full depth on the first pass and you'll see that here in just a second. But how do we know how deep we're gonna go? It's not just measuring. So let's look at this example here, right? So if I lock this down, It is one inch, so the height is one inch. Now, I am gonna go one inch, but I also need to add the thickness of this piece here because I want this whole thing to sit flush. So I'm gonna go one inch down plus the depth of this. I'll cut that in two passes. Then when we go to test fit this, this will now be flush. And the thickness of this is 3 16 so I'm gonna do a total depth for the grooves of one, and three sixteenths. Okay, so I've got everything set up. It's time to go ahead and just make my first cut. Okay, so I brought you in close just to show you. So this is my original line. I'm just a little bit off to the side, which is what I want. And now I went all the way to this line and I started it on that line back there. And this is a good opportunity that you can go ahead and test and make sure that your bit that you're using is the right size and this one's perfect. The other benefit is it'll show you exactly where you need to line your next cut up. So for me to be in here, I wanna make sure that the edge of my bit is cutting right along that line and everything should line up real good. So now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and set it the total depth and go ahead and make my second cut and then I'm gonna slide it over and I'll make my two cuts here and then we'll do another quick test fit.
So now's the first big moment of truth. Let's make sure that everything lined up and this will be accepted into these grooves that we cut. And then we just have one other step in terms of using the router and cutting out. So, and it fits in there just right. I've got a little bit of space on each side and now it is sticking up above the top, but that's because now we have to cut out this portion. Now, earlier I said that this was 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. So we are going to take out 3 sixteenths of an inch here in the middle. And that's where this bit right here is going to come into play. It's gonna cut out uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch. And then once we put this back in, everything will be flush. And then it's time to start lining up for the bolts. Okay, I've got everything cut out in the center. I'm gonna go ahead and do my final fit. And just like that, everything lines up and it's good to go. Nice and flush with the tabletop itself. And now we just gotta put some bolts in. So I, I just wanted to real quickly bring you guys in just so you can kind of see it close up. Everything came out nice and flush. Looks pretty good. Okay, so the last thing to do is go ahead and put in these threaded inserts and bolts. Now, before I talk about the threaded inserts and bolts, uh, for the demonstration of this video, I'm only gonna do three. I'll do one on the end, uh, in the middle, and then one on the far end. Uh, just know that you could also place them in here, but I'm just showing you guys how to do it. The thing that I'm going to use to do that is one of these threaded inserts and one of these matching bolts. And they do exactly what you would expect, and they sit like that. Now, the company that I like to use for the threaded inserts is a company called Rampatech, and I'll leave a link to their website down in the description. And also, if you purchase these from Legacy Lumber, the pre-made ones, you can also get the Rampatech uh, threaded inserts and bolts with it. This part is pretty straightforward. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the center location in each one of the ones that I'm gonna drill here, here, and here, I will now take out my C-channel. I'm gonna go ahead and get my drill set up and I'm going to drill out the holes that these threaded inserts will go in. And they're just gonna be a little bit deeper than the total length uh, of this. And you can get a lot of different sizes. I'm just gonna use some of these uh, short ones that I have here uh, for the video. I'm gonna drill out the holes. I'll insert the threaded inserts. I'll put the C-channel back in, and then we'll go ahead and tighten everything down and you'll get to see it when it's all finished. Okay, I've got my holes drilled and I'm just gonna demonstrate something that I like to do on just this first one. And that's, I like to take some of this Starbond medium and I just like to put some in the threads and just helps it Staying a little bit more. A lot of people will use epoxy. Uh, I don't really even know how necessary uh, any of that is, but I do it anyway. Better to be safe than sorry. But once you get these things in, you just thread them in until they're down flush. Once they're flush, you're good to go. So I'll just do the last two real quick. Okay, so now I'm going ahead and place my C-channel back in. Everything is lined up. First bolt that I'm gonna put in there is going to be my center bolt. And as I stated before, I'm actually gonna go ahead and tighten this one down nice and snug. Now I'm not gonna over tighten it because I don't wanna break the bolt, but nice and snug. And then these ones on the ends, I'm just gonna thread them in with my fingers until they're nice and tight on the metal. And I'm just going to give it a, a very, very small turn to make it just barely snug. 
because again, remember, I want the table to be able to move this way. And I would do the exact same thing if I did the holes here. And there it is. You got your C-channel installed. The only thing I would have to do after this before getting it prepped for finish is clean up these edges, uh, clean up the ends. It's good to go. Okay, so that's all there is to it. Installing C-channels, super, super easy. You can do it with very minimal tools. And I think the value that they provide is pretty good, especially if you're not doing, um, let's say, breadboard ends. I don't like to do a lot of breadboard ends, so I think if I was gonna uh, wanna do something like this to keep my table flat over time, I think C-channels would probably be the way that I would go. I would like to add a special thank you to Legacy Lumber for sending me this C-channel just so I could do this video to show all of you guys. And like I said before, I'll leave links to Legacy Lumber's website down in the bottom. Uh, I'll leave a link for Rampatech so you can go check out all the threaded inserts uh, that they have. They're my favorite ones. They're the ones that I use in all my projects. And I'll also leave a link so you can uh, find exactly which C channel I was talking about from Home Depot. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I would love to hear your thoughts and comments or any questions that you might have down below. Or you can send me a DM over on Instagram and if you're not following me there, go check it out, at Ben's Woodworking. You'll get to see what I'm doing on a daily basis and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. That's all I have for you this week, but until next time, get in the shop, try something new, and I will see you in the next video.